Question number nine, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Finance. Does he stand by his statement about whether inequality was a problem in the Auckland housing market? I quote, We've been concerned about that for some time, that there's part of Auckland where there's been really no new supply of lower value houses that low and middle income families can afford. Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, and it's time, that, it's time that the member agreed with us. As I've said for some time, council planning rules increase inequality because of land use rules that limit heights, prevent subdivisions, increase land costs and impose delays on the provision of new housing. And of course, the lower the value of that housing, the more impact it has. And as the Productivity Commission recently pointed out, it is affordable housing that is most affected by these rules. That is why the government is working with the councils who are the deciders and regulators with respect to housing supply to cut red tape, free up land and infrastructure constraints and get more houses built. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. What advice has he had on whether inequality will be increased or decreased by high levels of property speculation, reducing the opportunity for young New Zealanders to get into their first home? Uh, the Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, high levels of property speculation are a very obvious symptom of constrained supply. There isn't high levels of property speculation in Upper Hutt or in Vicargal because there isn't much evidence of constrained supply relative to demand. So the best, the best response to high levels of speculation, if that is what is occurring, is to expand supply as quickly as possible. And in that respect, the members' cooperation in persuading the Auckland Council to act decisively on this matter uh, would be appreciated, but actually the Labor Party don't really want to help out. Supplementary. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why should people have any confidence in his main housing supply initiative, the special housing areas, when only 5 to 10 per cent of the houses built are affordable? At current prices, that means $560,000. And less than 300 houses have been built in those special housing areas in nearly two years. Uh, the Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's possible the member uh, hasn't, doesn't have all the facts. But in any case, the special housing areas, the special housing areas uh, were a response to the fact that the core Auckland planning process simply couldn't deliver any new supply of any scale because it was designed to stop new supply with the support of that member and the councillors from his party on that council who has spent the last 15 years making sure Auckland didn't grow. That's why we had to have special housing areas. They're not perfect, but they're a lot better than what was there. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. What are the advantages to New Zealanders, if any, of allowing non-resident foreigners to trade our houses for capital gain? The Honourable Bill English. Well, I don't know why the member is so scared of repeating his definition of non-resident traders in houses. Last week he was very clear who they were. But of course, foreign investors make some contribution because if they invest in housing that expands supply, that's good. And in fact, uh, when the prices the price is pushed higher, it encourages more development and more supply. Uh, however, we're getting on with building houses. We're not sitting there going through the phone book trying to decide which migrants, which migrants should remain homeless. Supplementary. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why is his government willing to implement anti-money laundering rules at the request of the President of China but unwilling to restrict non-resident foreign buyers as the majority of New Zealanders want. The, the Honourable Speaker, Bill English. Uh, the anti-money laundering rules are not being made at the request of the President of China. In fact, it's been a global effort 
to slow down the flows of dirty and corrupt money around the world. And the anti money laundering rules were put in place some years ago. We're simply, in fact, and probably by the previous government, we're simply requiring any uh, foreign buyer to open a bank account so they have to go through those thorough processes of identification. That may stop some foreigners buying houses in New Zealand. Order. Question number 10, Jono Naylor.